Hi everyone, I am here with a true story from the book we're reading now. Miracles in Modern Day Times. Chapter 10 is by Rhonda S. And it is con called Considerate Joy. When my two children were in elementary school, my prayers for them were simple. I prayed for them to do well in school, to have fun, to stay safe, and to make and be good friends. As they grew up, my prayers gradually changed. I mistakenly assumed that prayers could be the same for both my children, that what worked for one child would work for the other. When my son, the younger of the two, was a senior in high school, my prayers contained obvious requests like God's direction for his future teacher-student relationships, deep friendships, and preparation for college. But they were intermingled with prayers for his personal safety and deliverance from drugs and alcohol. This precious boy of mine had always been very sweet and sensitive. He was the one who would enjoy mommy time by cuddling with me any chance he had. He appeared to have a different personality than his sibling, but that was how God was modeling and shaping him. I actually thought he would be the easier of the two to discipline and raise. What I didn't know was that by his senior year, he had been smoking marijuana for over three years. Some of his friendships were compromising his safety and he had dabbled in other drugs. I guess the transformation really began once he started high school. He was a bright, funny, and very kind young man going into his freshman year. I believe that year he began looking for the approval of his peers and doing whatever it took to receive it. Unfortunately, as parents, we gave way to many excuses for the changes in his behavior and attitude. With each passing year, we drifted further and further apart in our relationship. As his senior year progressed and I realized graduation was approaching, I was certain the Lord would answer my prayers by having him attend the Christian college he'd been accepted to. I believed he needed new friends, a new atmosphere, and a fresh start. However, his bad choices continued. With very heavy hearts, we decided he would attend a local state university. Everything came to a head two weeks before he was to leave. My husband and I didn't realize just how hard the devil was attacking our entire family. We seemed to be falling apart as individuals and as a whole. To this day, I can still hear the yelling and feel the sting of tears. We'd made a written agreement that we would not have any drug paraphernalia in our home. I had run out to do a couple errands, and when I returned, I couldn't believe how heavily our home smelled of marijuana. Then I knew what needed to be done, but I was heartbroken about having to do it. I asked him to leave our home per our signed agreement. The next 30 minutes were horrific. He proceeded to call me every name in the book to tear me down as an individual, as a mom, and as a Christian with his words. Everything he did was to hurt and infuriate me. I was much calmer than I thought I could be. With every stab to my heart, I reached for God's comfort. At one point, I had tears in my eyes, but I wasn't overly emotional. As he grabbed a backpack and headed for the door, the thought crossed my mind that for what felt like the first time, I wouldn't have any idea where he was going, who he would be with, or what he would be doing. I watched my son take his skateboard and ride down our driveway until he was out of sight. The pain was almost unbearable. Even with all the questions whirling around my head, in that very moment I heard God's still, small voice say, I love him more than you do. In that moment I knew something had to change. I didn't know exactly how, but that didn't matter. My prayer life and devotions would have to be transformed. Instead of praying for my son's circumstances, I began praying for the way I would handle them. My life verse immediately became James 1, 2, and 3. 
that regardless of my situation and all the heartbreak, I agreed to count it pure joy and wholeheartedly give my son back to God, no matter what that looked like. It was a transformation toward knowing the peace of God, which truly does pass all understanding. While there were still tears and times of sadness, they were fewer and further between. I had hope for my life and life of my son. He was gone seven days before he returned home. Although his recreational life using drugs didn't change, he was willing to conform to our new rules and go to college. The next two years of college, he continued getting high. He functioned adequately in family settings when he needed to, acting somewhat appropriately during the holidays. And when he came home to be with his sister's wedding, I continued to wholeheartedly pray for him and believe in God's plan for his life. During the summer between his sophomore and junior years of college, he was offered a job. We were so excited for him, believing it would help him gain responsibility and maturity. Unfortunately, it would turn out to be an environment filled with people who were also using drugs. We knew he'd still be using his drug of choice, marijuana, but now he was being, beginning to dabble more in others. Praying my son through each day became a normal way of life. His life was out of my hands. Only God could take care of him now. I didn't think life could get worse than the first time he skateboarded out of our lives. I was wrong. The second time he left was the worst day of my entire life. The words that came out of my son's mouth broke my heart into pieces. Yet to my surprise, I remained calm and controlled. I remember sensing it was the influence of drugs talking and not my son. Before he left, God's still small voice again spoke to me and gently led me to share with him some very powerful words. I told him that from the very second, all the filth that was vomited out of his mouth toward me was already forgiven. I told him there was nothing he could ever say to do that would change my unconditional love for him. I had no idea what the future held for us at that moment, but because of the words I was sharing, I knew God was in control and I was not. And then for the second time, I watched him leave our driveway once again, this time in a car. With this departure, I felt physically ill. I fell onto our driveway sobbing uncontrollably and gasping for air. The pain in my heart was absolutely excruciating. He was gone for only a few days. When he returned, he made it very clear that since he'd already been down this road, things would be quite different going forward. The first difference was that he was required to meet with a man who had experience helping addicts. The second difference was that if he didn't keep up with his end of the bargain, he would finally follow through with previous idle threats by providing no funding for college, cutting off any and all financial help, and asking him to move out of our home. After approximately three months, our son became completely drug-free. This was by his choice and his timing. Before this trial, I was striving for a pain-free life. I clung to my family as if they were my very own. I had yet to wholeheartedly give him to Jesus. Without this trial, I would not have known my constant communion of God, who is our faithful father, who takes care of my children whenever and wherever they are, and who supplied me with everything I needed as a mother. The change in our son has been so extreme that friends and family often make comments after spending time with him. He is once again respectful, helpful, and a joy to be around. He often offers us information about his whereabouts and the people he will be with.
God has, uh, God has a hold of him and is working in and through him. I trust he will never let go. One day, nearing the end of my son's junior year in college, I drove up our driveway to the place where I'd fallen on my face in anguish the second time he had left our home. In that very moment, I realized a text from him letting me know that he had just read an excerpt from the devotional book I sent him. He went on to explain how God had provided just what he needed through those words that day. Pure joy. James 1, 2, and 3. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Good night, guys.